Now, 10 years ago, we didn't have to do that. Mm. That's the interesting thing. 10 years ago, when pe- customers were coming in, I was just kind of like, yeah. so what do you want? Yeah, just deliver and then... Hey, deliver. what do you want? Mm. You want some of this. You want mm. some of this service, right? Okay. That confidence. Mm. Now I'm just like, okay, hi, hello. <laughs> I'm kneeling, <laughs> oh, oh, is that what you want? Okay, I'm here to do it. Yes, but before I was like, so what's yeah. up? What's up? Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today, I have a special invitee on this channel, someone who has been living for 10 years or more than 10 years in Vietnam. Maybe you recognize his face. Uh, so his name is Yevato. Thank you for accepting uh, my invitation to come to share about your journey and also your entrepreneurship journey because you've been running business in Vietnam with the up and down. So I hope through this video you can illustrate a little bit what people don't say publicly about doing business in Vietnam and how we can have some struggle and how we have to recover uh, after having the trouble. Okay. Uh, so thank, thank you. It's an honor to be here and um, I would, I, it, I mean, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been living here for 11 years now. Um, a lot of my life has been documented. If you can go back to my videos, it starts like seven or eight years ago, I think. And um, I think Vietnam is a great place to live. Uh, there are many perks. There are many adventures here. There are many pleasures, um, many good things about Vietnam. Um, there are a lot of topics that we can cover. But I think the first thing that I want to talk about is moving from my middle class existence in California and uh, coming here to Vietnam and what that transition was like. Um, and it's really interest, it's, it's a really interesting topic. I think that when I first came here as a middle class person living in California uh, near LA, when I first came here, I thought I was special. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's like when you're coming from a developed country, tree to a, an emerging developing economy uh, and you 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 at first you may feel this sense of that you're that you're you know Nothing special enough. or perhaps developed and it's really embarrassing but actually that can hurt you because uh, Once you kind of have that mindset, that complacency inside of your head, you're not really moving forward as a human being. And so, you know, in America, I might be among people who have, you know, many accomplishments. Um, they can be economic or whatever. Once I came here, I, I thought that I, you know, was perhaps a notch above the locals here. And what that did was that really hurt me in the long term because I didn't really do anything to better myself. And um, I think that's one of the traps that, you know, you guys can or anyone can avoid. It was very pleasant for me. Like my coming here, I discovered that the prices were really low and that I can live uh, much more comfortably. However, um, there, there are certain things that can perhaps uh, poison you. You know, there, there are vices here. Um, I won't get into what they are, but just use your imagination. There are vices here and there are people who may live on the cheap, but are, you know, uh, abusing themselves. Uh, abusing their bank accounts through the vices that are available here. That's one thing that you really want to uh, stay away from. Um, I think when you, when you come here, it takes a good two to three years to know what this place is about. You know, it's like your first year, your second year, you're still in that stage of discovery. Uh, and for me, I think after four years of living here, that's when I just kind of like, it clicked. Okay, 
all right, so I understand my place in this society. I understand where I need to go from this point on. Um, the thing about this society, you know, we call it an emerging market. We call it a developing market. It gets more sophisticated every year. It's, it's amazing. It's like when we talk about culture uh, in the developed world, it just kind of plateaued. Everything is the same. You're just adding on different technologies, you know, different uh, uh, cultural amendments, if you will. Here, it's that times 10 every year and and then for instance let me give you an example when i first came here no one was using credit cards now people are are not only using credit cards but they're using like you know barcodes and all kinds of things that are not being utilized in the states yeah it's a uh, and a lot of the things that the previous generation whom i know about you know the generation that was 10 years ago and the generation now the generation now is much more educated, healthier, uh, have access to the internet. And, uh, you know, the, the, the generation 10 years uh, previous and the generation now, they're, they're completely uh, different. Um, you, guys, you guys have to really uh, keep that in mind. You know, you, you know, I'm just like you guys. Before I actually came here, I, I watched all the, you know, Oliver Stone movies and <laughs> Vietnam movies, and that had an imprint in my mind. And while some of those um, situations are true, Vietnam is nothing like that. This is uh, high paced. Uh, this uh, society values technology. Um, there's a lot of wealth here, uh, sophistication, culture, uh, beauty. Uh, and danger, yeah. It's a, uh, it's. Anyways, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good kind of illustration about mm -hmm. how was the the, the summary of your mm -hmm. life uh, mm -hmm. for the last ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, can we maybe focus a little bit now about the, your entrepreneurship story because oh, yeah. you didn't share so much on YouTube about what was your journey mm -hmm. uh, running an English center yeah. at a pretty kind of early stage, I would yeah. say here. Uh -huh. You kind of surf a certain trend. Uh -huh. uh, can you share about how was that? entrepreneurship project you had here and Absolutely. run for, for a couple sure. of years. Yeah, I would love to talk about that. Okay, so for me, um, I am I would consider myself a professional teacher. Um, and that is where the bulk of my earnings come from. And as a professional teacher, you just kind of have to find your segment, who you're going to cater to. For me, I focus on the Korean community. Um, actually, you're kind of limiting yourself when you do that, by the way, because by not focusing on the large Vietnamese community and focusing on a smaller segment, uh, there are dangers with that. You can't really scale it. But, uh, but it's interesting because, for one, um, the Korean community here, they're here for about three years, and then you have another generation of Korean uh, people coming here. Um, so for me, what I do is, Instead of teaching English, I take the more academic route. So um, there's a Korean community here that's looking for, you know, uh, scholars, people with PhDs, people who can uh, teach physics, sciences, chemistry. Uh, you know, a lot of the Koreans who are here, they've already been exposed to the whole English Academy, the education. Hey guys, my name is Bob. You know, they've done that before. They don't need that here. They need someone who can help them with chemistry, um, the classics. Uh, th that, that's the segment that I serve. Um, how much do I get paid right now? I do, I teach students uh, literature um, because that's what's, uh, that's what you know, many of the Korean students are attending international schools, uh, American international schools, Australian international schools, and uh, they need help, not with the English necessarily, but with the whole literature aspect. You know, they need, uh, they need to understand uh, the concept of 
existentialism and what that's about. You know, they need, they want to understand what Albert Camus' uh, The Stranger is really about. You know, they, they're, they're writing thesis papers in high school about, you know, these topics. And I get paid $50 an hour. That is the rate, $50 an hour. If you're teaching English, if you're going to the person's house to teach English for IELTS, a lot of the tests out there, you would be getting paid about $25 an hour. However, you may want to position yourself to be doing the $50 an hour. However, there is, um, you have to be able to deliver the results. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you're being paid $50 an hour, you have to sort of guarantee that by the end of uh, the term, uh, the student achieves a score that he or she uh, is satisfied with. Um, now, this is the way I work now. Previously, I had a, a center in which I had, you know, at one time, 40, 50 students at a time. They were Korean. You had young kids and I was willing to do anything. You know, I would have a, I would have a teacher. I would be teaching and I would just, uh, at, at this point, it, 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 there was a lot of traffic going in and out. And I had a building in which I had to pay the rent. I had to pay the teachers, pay the cleaning lady, pay the electricity. Uh, what you would might consider a traditional English center academy. Um, however, I find that these sort of business modules are not are not are not a, um, are kind of outdated now. People don't necessarily are looking for these types of services anymore. They don't want the big building with the pretty you know uh, with the pretty logo. Uh, I think for the segment that I serve. They just want results. They just want results and they just want someone who knows what he's doing. Um, and that means that we could just work out of a Starbucks. Uh, and so, you know, if I'll tell you about one, uh, one segment of the Korean population, you know, they can be attending an international school and taking a foreign language such as Chinese or French. How, uh, but, you know, there are many different uh, curriculums for French and Chinese. You have A-level, IGCSC or IB. Uh, but you, you, you really need to know this curriculum. Like, like, yeah, some people can speak Chinese really well. But do you know the IB aspect of the Chinese? That's a really interesting thing. Um, it takes about a year to sort of develop your eyes for what that whole IB system is about. To serve the Korean community, I every weekend I went to Cambodia. So, I, so okay, let's talk about the profile of the students whom I serve. Um, most of my uh, students' parents are either working for a really big Korean company or they are like factory owners, industrialists, in which they're doing shoes, clothes, machines. So I knew that there is that community in Cambodia as well. Mm -hmm. And I was going there every weekend, Cambodia, to offer the services to my students in Cambodia. Now, I didn't want to go to Cambodia. I, at one point, I, I was kind of forced to go to Cambodia mm -hmm. because it was so competitive. Mm -hmm. at, at one point, it was so competitive that I was going to Cambodia to make the money to pay the teachers and pay the rent. Isn't that a really interesting story? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the idea of the, the English center with the big building and the pretty logo and the teachers and the t-shirts and, and, and that uh, is probably not your best business model at this point of uh, Ho Chi Minh City's history. Um, the business has changed a lot in which we are using um, internet platforms to advertise, to get customers. Uh, we are using internet platforms such as Google Classroom to, um, to uh, set up the curriculum. We're using a lot of technology now. It's not necessarily uh, a matter of having a big, pretty brick and mortar space. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the education business is really facilitated with technology right now. Um, you know, going back to how 
it gets more and more competitive here. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, we didn't have um, people like you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, Westerners tended to be in their 50s and 60s. They were retirees. Sometime around 2015, I started seeing younger Western people. The same goes for Koreans. When I first came here in 2010, most I was the youngest. I was 30 at that time, and I was considered like the youngest guy here. It was this was this was a, a place that was not attractive for young people to come to, and then um, and then that changed about five, maybe four years ago. Uh, starting from 2015, 2016, you had uh, younger faces, people in their 20s and 30s, um, and then what happened was you had the the the, the segment of the expat population that was older, that was here, they kind of moved out of the city and then they started going to the countryside, mm -hmm. Laos, Cambodia. Um, you know, the, it, not to say that young is always better, but just from an economic perspective, you know, uh, yeah, you guys uh, can make your um, observations there. The consumers here, the Vietnamese consumers are getting a lot more sophisticated too. Um, I think there is this sort of thing in Asia in which tastes change really fast. Like one year they can be into this one thing. The next year they don't care about that anymore. I think that's the fast pace of Asia. And I've seen that in Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, even China. They're kind of into one thing. Right now it's dogs. <laughs> I see a lot of Vietnamese people into dogs. Last year was something else. Next year, they might not care about dogs anymore. And then you're, you're going to have like a, a many dogs without owners. So you think it was also a case for the on an education perspective, like mm -hmm. you kind of be able to surf a trend where you have plenty of students as well as different locations where you were teaching and delivering your teaching classes. And after a point, there were mm -hmm. different factors coming, different components that mm -hmm. can uh, kill uh, success, right? There are so many different factors. But if I had to sort of lay it out in a simple way, there's more competition. Mm -hmm. More Koreans like me coming in to serve the Korean community um, and with more competition. It, it just, there's more co competition every year. I just, it just, I can see it. I can smell it. I can see that, you know, new people coming in to serve the community with their services. But so, so every year I have to adapt myself so that my surface is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you have to make a conscious, you, you, you have to make these conscious efforts to, to get your game up. Mm. It, it, you just have to do that just to survive, just to survive here. Um, but I think for the world, coming to Vietnam has become a more and more attractive thing. Um, I don't know, maybe after the whole COVID thing is over, how many people are going, oh my gosh, I want to go to China mm -hmm. on, a, on this grand trip. You know, I, I don't know, maybe that's, you don't have those people. It, you know, where will those people go? Okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go to China anymore, uh, but I want to explore the East. Mm -hmm. You know, the, probably mm -hmm. Vietnam's going to be on top of the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so one, if I can lay it out, in simple terms, more competition. Two, the consumers are getting more and more um, sophisticated. So, so as time goes on, let's talk about a French restaurant that's serving the Vietnamese community. Uh, every year, it has to get better. And so, you know, when you first came here and when you had French cuisine, you probably thought, okay, this is not bad. Now, you know, the, the French food that you have now I'm sure is just as good as the food that you have back home. It's, it's what's one of those things. Like if you can't deliver a service that is good, you know, you're, you're, it's going to hurt you in the competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so consumers are becoming more sophisticated. Uh, number two is uh, the competition. Um, I think that's about it. As long as you can adapt and evolve so that your services are becoming better for the consumer. And I think uh, a, a, really a really important part of 
you know, uh, becoming better, the progress is, 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 is the whole empathy aspect of if, if this person, if I were this person, what is this person going to want? And to be constantly thinking about that day and night, what does this person want? How do I make this person happy? Now, 10 years ago, we didn't have to do that. Mm. That's the interesting thing. 10 years ago, when pe- customers were coming in, I was just kind of like, yeah. so what do you want? Yeah, just deliver and then... Hey, what went, do you want? Mm. You want some of this. You want mm. some of this service, right? Okay. That confidence. Mm. Now I'm just like, okay, hi, hello. <laughs> I'm feeling, <laughs> oh, oh, is that what you want? Okay, I'm here to do it. Yes, but before I was like, so what's yeah. up? What's up? You know, but now I'm just like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we got that. Okay. And I'm thinking, how do I keep this guy? How do I keep this guy? Don't quit. Don't quit. Keep on doing it with me. You know, it's sort of a, a shift. But actually, it's interesting to know that with the more sophisticated services, the prices have gone up. Mm-hmm. So right now, 50, some people are saying that, you know, in two years, I can probably get 70. I think this, these are how markets develop. And then, and then from that, you, you kind of uh, find your positioning with, in, within the market. Mm-hmm. You manage to narrow your audience and you manage to narrow your services. So going more deep in the direction of providing this value added that normal English teachers don't do, but with all the scope that you are currently providing and yeah. increasing the, the, the value for the student, then in the end, your earning. Mm. I think it's the, the good direction you are yeah, 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 actually, right now, right? Yeah, how you're living here. You know, a lot of expats come here. The, the, the whole ironic thing is, okay, you have people who go to Australia, right? As, you know, temporary workers, right? Mm-hmm. And they get out, get out of Australia with money mm-hmm. in their hands. Mm-hmm. This is a country in which people come in with money and leave without it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's like they leave with like zero because again you have a lot of temptation and as well temptation like and business i mean if you want to start something it's not yeah. easy yeah you either need to find a partner mm-hmm. which also you have this dilemma of should i partner with a local should i do things by my own yeah right and then in the end of the day as you say competition is rising mm-hmm. consumer is getting more and more aware about yes. what they can find in the west what yeah. they what they what they expect here as yeah. well probably and as a business owner just to finish on that mm-hmm. It's not only skills of hiding the, having the good idea. Yeah. It's also how you can operate on a day to day basis. How yeah. you can acquire sales, uh, knowledge, marketing yeah. knowledge yeah. to really leverage what you can provide and kind of mm-hmm. scaling that, right? Let's say now, what could be your, your, your piece of advice you would share to yourself 10 years ago? Maybe not to commit some mistake or maybe to take better decision on mm-hmm. the business and on the yeah. personal life. Yeah. Um, one. <laughs> I would have saved my money. It's like discipline. I, when, when I first came here, I had no discipline because I was like, ha, huh, I'll never go hungry. And I just started spending money like this. It's just like, it's really weird because in, the, in, in, in California, I just knew what my limits were and I would maintain my expenses. Here, I was just under the impression that things are just cheaper. And then my suddenly my wallet just opens to do it. Oh, just do it, whatever. You know, that that habit is so it was individual. It's not this country that 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 you know instilled a bad habit in me. It was it was me. Mm-hmm. So and at that time, ten years ago, uh, I was generating six figures at the age of thirty. And so I thought I was like, you know, I thought I was special. But anyways, um I should have saved my money at that time. Because like I said, you know, you, when you're when you're an entrepreneur, you know, the tomorrow, what tomorrow is going to be, these are uh, um, unpredictable. So I should have saved my money. Number two, you got to live like a local here. No more expensive cheeses. You could just <laughs> eat the local cheese. No more uh, imported wine. Drink the drink the local wine. Uh, cook at home. OK, what it, what it really boils down to is being in control of your finances and um you know you can dine out and spend you know a hundred dollars two hundred dollars easily here but you don't want to do that uh you want to cook at home uh you you want to uh embrace yourself with a community that is has value you want to embrace yourself in a community here that is positive minded and educated uh you don't want to you don't want to 
surround yourself with people who have escaped from something. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you must be able to provide value within the society. And you're, you, you want to sort of, you are not here to take in all of the pleasures that this country can provide for you. That's a part of it. Don't get me wrong. That is a big part of that. But you don't want to, you don't want to, you're, you know, your, your, your mindset should not be 100% pleasure. It, it should not be that. You, you, sh you need to work and be disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the lessons that I think uh, I, I may have missed out on. And then uh, those lessons I didn't uh, follow. And, and that's why I, I uh, experienced a great downfall about four, five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess good lesson on the mm -hmm. entrepreneurial aspect and as well as like, the easy temptation we can get. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if we, we can fall in in Asia, especially yeah. when we come from the West. Yeah. Everything is new, everything is beautiful, mm -hmm. and we need to kind of keep that little voice inside to say, hey, mm -hmm. we can still have fun, we can still enjoy, but mm -hmm. we also have to be more like preparing stuff and uh, planning oh, yeah. for, the, for, for, the, for the more harder day that may come one day. Mm -hmm. um, one last word for the audience. My partner right mm -hmm. now really grounded me, mm -hmm. and I find that, you know, that was a really, if, if I did not find my partner, I think I would still be kind of, I don't know, it, um, you know, the movie Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, be swinging the whiskey and be like, ah, ah, ah. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing push ups and listening to the doors and, ah, you know, yeah. uh, with a cigarette in my mouth. I don't know. I think, I think my partner, uh, you know, grounded me and, 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 you know, she was mature, more, much more mature than I am. <laughs> And which we, there's an age gap difference, but uh, but she was more mature than I am. So um, you don't want to find someone who is as immature as you. You might want to find someone who can balance you out, have a partner who can balance you out. And, and you know, that is going to be a good addition to who you are, not someone who's going to drag you down. You know, be, if you're the type of person who drags yourself down in the first place like me, mm -hmm. you know, because I have a lot of, you know, um, imperfections and and uh, you want to find someone who can, you know, um, elevate you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's she she I, I, I want to give my partner right now um, full credit for mm -hmm. taking me out of this whole, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, nonsense in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And religion, um, I, I'm all, you know, uh, yeah, religion is really important. Um, I think, I think, yeah, religion is really important because you want to keep yourself grounded. Uh, you don't want to become too crazy. Um, the whole aspect of faith and um, justice, you know, being cool to people, being healthy, not abusing your body, not abusing your mind. Uh, and living a just a balanced life is a really important aspect of uh, just life in general, not just uh, Vietnam, but just living in general, I think, yeah. Okay, thanks for the sharing. The, Thank the, you. The, something coming from deep inside. Uh, Thank you. It's cool that you were able to share this uh, for the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check in the description. You will, uh, I will leave the link of, of the Evato channel. So if you want to have a look to kind of his journey in Vietnam, what he was sharing before, and probably another video we're going to make on his channel more about your life in 2021 and mm -hmm. how was Vietnam for, for like this special year in Vietnam? Okay. Uh, you can have a look below in the description. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks I really again. appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.